Last episode of Review Starlight, Hikari and Juna were a little upset at Karen for crashing into their little stage play and Karen and Juna got to have their own little match where Karen showed Juna yet again that she is the, um, the better one, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> but hey, they became friends after this, I would presume, or something, so good on them. We also get to see that Maya is the one who is at the top of the leaderboard, I presume, so uh, this episode is also called the, Stop st the Top Star, so I don't know, I guess maybe we will get a little focus on Maya, we will just have to see. Full links are on Patreon, early access, and a YouTube membership. Other than that, let us get started. I was thinking about how, like, is that just a camera? But I guess that is the star. <laughs> Maybe it could be both. I don't know. Spoilers? Oh, gave you something not wobbly. <laughs> Give me a bananas either way. <laughs> Should have just left her in the bed at that point. So they just got a futon. That's why you just gotta splash her with cold water. <laughs> yeah, she likes it. <gasps> uh oh. <laughs> Calling her a nickname and everything. Uh oh. Uh oh. Uh oh. Oh, look at them! Look at these two in their relationship. They're suddenly calling each other first names and nicknames. Also work be behind the scenes. God damn. Hey, you do you. <laughs> Just to keep her hands on Hikari and make, make sure she doesn't run away. <gasps> ah, she. <laughs> you let your guard down. <laughs> Since you're working in the backstage, you can pull some strings. Oh my god, she's so tall. <laughs> I just realized. <gasps> Overslept! Can't believe it. Well, she also had a had her own backstage fight, huh? <laughs> Bribe is such a tasteless word. <laughs> Contribution. Big doki doki out here, dude. Oh my god, she got a little, <laughs> a little head massager, dude. Damn, right on his nipple. <laughs> They're both just staring at it, at Hikari. The embodiment of a star. <laughs> She's just writing. She's just signing her own name. Oh, we see Futaba noticing. Rip. Uh oh. She got locked in. Dude, she's got a crowbar out there, dude. <laughs> you can't come to the audition anymore. <laughs> hey, yo, don't forget the. Hopefully, you're coming back to pick her up. Put some scary music in here. <laughs> Turn this black and white. It's a horror. It's a horror scene all of a sudden. Ha! <laughs> here, have some food. <laughs> oh, that's a nice shirt. Ouch. Here she is, working, practicing by herself. Banana, huh? Bloody cool. 
Yeah, she got kidnapped, so, uh... <laughs> Oh, that's Karuko. Damn, dude, look at all those fucking gloss masks, the skin. Futabahan. That's the only thing that would make you act strange. Oh, shit, dude. <laughs> Talented child actress. I'm, <laughs> I'm just a regular person. Damn, both of them. Both of them just got candy, dude. <laughs> All alone for so long. How long has it been? A couple hours? <laughs> One hour? Mahiruhan. Is it Karuko who says banana han? I think the least so, yeah. In your sleep every night? Oh, shit. How does she know that? Oh, shit. She fucking code read her. <laughs> Only had eyes for Karuko. <laughs> Grateful to her for what? Oh, she's aiming. Yeah, for the top row. Uh oh. Huh? Audition day three. Hikari day off. Oh. <laughs> Wow, this is some sneaky stuff you've got here. Well, there she goes. Shouldn't have given her that banana. Mm. <gasps> Damn, dude. This is the only person who's day off is Hikari. He's just like, yeah, sorry, Hikari. <laughs> you can take a break. Oh shit, here comes Maya! Coming in on a white swan and everything. <laughs> Yo, that crowbar! Yo, she's really putting that crowbar to use! See? You should've- You should've broken Karen's legs if you had that crowbar. Damn, they're just letting her run down all these steps? Last time Karen came over here, she just clicked on the elevator button and she went down. <laughs> God, how sh how how sharp are these, are these swords? <laughs> hey, yo, Hikari's getting her steps in <laughs> together. Oh, damn! They're just out here fighting. What have you given up? <laughs> oh shit. Again, she's really getting her steps in, dude. Review of Pride. <laughs> I'm still real like, how, how sharp are these swords? <laughs> I just, whoops! I slash her neck! I sacrificed that girl. Oh shit. What sacrifice are you willing to take? You saying you're here fighting together with Hikari? Damn, dude. The last two ones, he's just it's just kind of been truly it's her stage, huh? Oh wow, just a <laughs> How'd she get over here? Damn, dude, she ran all over a place and she just came out of back at school. <laughs> Hey, yo, these underground tunnels, dude, how large is this school? Oh, there you go. Star even on my own. <laughs> ah. Well. Excuse me, Maya, have you look at the night sky? There are multiple stars up there. That girl's passion are. It's undying. Even if you've sacrificed her, huh? she's still gonna climb her way up.
That melody was very familiar to another song. I guess the theater was calling for Karen uh, back in episode one, right? Because it literally just, all she did was just click on the elevator button a while. <laughs> and then Hikari is just over here running down multiple steps, jumping over fucking platforms, <laughs> and then she just gets right back at school. <laughs> I assume eventually we will have a match between Hikari and Mahiru? See look, Hikari was trying to keep you away from getting your L. Yep, Maya's still there. Right at the bottom. Oh, someone joining? Oh no, Karen's just at the bottom. <laughs> well, you gotta keep going back up. <laughs> I was- I was thinking, I'm like, she gonna get slapped? <laughs> See, look, that's why she's- she told you not to- to come to this audition. You had your- you had your shine, and now you lost, and you're just like, oh man. I lost. Who would have thought? It's not your app's fault. He knew. That's why he had to take Karen down a notch. Karen's- Had- Karen has one win and one loss. She's in ninth place. <laughs> hey, you know, she is a new player out here. You know, everybody, it seems like everybody else has just been, <laughs> been in this back audition for a while now. You know, maybe they have a better, uh, a win ratio than her. <laughs> well, actually, no, I, I assume it's a little bit more of like, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know how this leaderboard goes, actually. All I see is it's a leaderboard and that's it. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if it goes by win-lose ratio or not, or or whatever. I, I'm so tempted to say uh, a kill ratio, like <laughs> like we're playing Counter-Strike or something, you know? <laughs> anyways, anyways, I'm gonna figure out what the hell I want to talk about, and we will be right back to the center. <laughs> so, this whole thing, right, with uh, the 99th uh, show stage play thing, whatever it is, Right, with uh, uh, Claudine and Maya playing the lead role. And they're like, let's go together, we will grasp that star. And then, spoilers, we departed never to see each other ever again. And I, and like with, uh, what is it, with, with Maya making mention later on, right, that she, like, if you were to become a star, what are you willing to sacrifice? And so for Maya, she's like, I sacrificed that girl, Claudine. You know, and yet, even though I sacrificed her, she's still coming after me. WTF. <laughs> Hold on, let me uh, let me actually go <laughs> through that whole subtitle thing. I say subtitle, the story. It's the story of goddesses drawn by the glow of the heavens. Why are you drawn by the glow of the heavens? You're goddesses. The fuck? But they are pulled from one another, never to meet again. It is a sad story. So, in this case... Claudine was the one who's just, ah, boo-hoo, I'm sad. And then Maya is the one who's looking down before she's just like, oh, San. <laughs> Our dream will not come to be to reach for the stars together. And that's the, uh, that's, that's the ending of the, the, the 99th Seychelles Festival. Wow. They had a dream, but they couldn't be together. So sad. But here's Karen being like, nah, dog. We gonna hit our dream together. So the subtitle of this is, and it shall be stow, uh, bestowed upon you the star which you have longed for. But then there's like the whole thing of, is that the whole thing of like sacrifice? To which, you know, I don't know, it sounds like a scam to me. Like I said, they're goddesses. Why are they following the glow of heaven? <laughs> Alright, so that was episode 3 of Review Starlight. Let me know what you guys think about it in the comments down below. You know that I always like talking to you guys. For me, I thought that this was a pretty good episode. I'm starting to contemplate about the fact that, um, is this the pattern that we're gonna have for these, uh, for these episodes now? It's just like, alright, we're gonna have a little bit of school time. And then we're gonna have a song and dance in in the underground tunnel. <laughs> in the underground battlefield that is in down here in the school that is like fucking humongous. And I don't understand how the school isn't collapsing. <laughs> Actually, no, it's probably like this much of like gap between the underground the, the underground stage and like the school up top. 
<laughs> or something. I don't know. It's it's a pretty big area, I gotta say. A lot of, I would say, I would presume a lot of support beams up there keeping everything from just absolutely collapsing. Anyways, we had a lot of character stuff. The uh, first one I guess I will talk about is he, uh, not he, uh, Mahiru. Where she's just, <laughs> dude, she's just fucking dragging Karen like that. <laughs> Again, just let her be late at this point. Like, who gives a shit? <laughs> but as uh, Mahiru kind of mentions a little bit later on, you know, she actually doesn't really mind taking care of Karen and whatnot. But also, the fact that Hikari is just out here sleeping on a little futon, like... What a fucking kudere, dude. <laughs> but we had Juna coming in, telling Karen, stop... Uh, stop bothering Mahiru this whole time, but you know, saying her last name and Karen ends up calling Juna Jun Jun and Juna calls Karen Karen instead of Aijo and Mahiru, you know, she picks up on that and she's just be like, what the fuck? <laughs> What's going on here? You know, even even Nana's over here like, hmm, very interesting. What is going on with this development? Then later on, Mahiru is just out here waiting for Karen to come back. Unfortunately, Karen is, um, she's, she, she was, she was, she was busy getting kidnapped by Mahiru, but she goes around the place trying to find, uh, where Karen is. She goes into the bath and she sees Karuko, who, goddamn, dude, look at all these items that she's got. They're little, they look fancy, dude. Got a little hair mask. I don't know why she has hand soap in the bath, but you know what? Good on her for washing her hands. I mean, <laughs> hey, it is the bath after all. It's got a little skin and cream. <laughs> I was gonna say pace for a second there. S no, skin, s s ski kit cream. Skin kit cream, right? <laughs> this is not a fragrance gloss map, gla mask. I can't read, I'm sorry. But it's a fragrance gloss mask. Hair mash B or air, a air mash B. Some good fonts. I'll talk a little bit about Karuko and Futaba in a bit, but uh, we learned that Nana is working in the backstage, so she might not have too many time on the stage, you know? So she wants to work, again, in the back, writing the scripts and all that. Understandable, you know, when I was in, uh, when I was doing stage. I did less of acting and did more in, the, in stage production instead, because, like, that's so much better. I, I enjoy doing that a whole lot better. Writing the script, directing, and all that. But because Nana is the one who's going to be working in the back, people out here giving her candy and everything, just be like, hey, dog, we want to be the main row out here. So, uh, how about you pull some strings and let us do that? Especially, I guess, she's writing the script, so, like, she can technically write. But also, like, this is based on, like, the stage play of Starlight, isn't it? So, like, it's... I don't know, unless Nana has just decided, you know what, this, this ending for Starlight sucks. I'm gonna rewrite it or, or whatever, you know? <laughs> I do love this part with uh, Karen just holding onto Hikari just to make sure we're like, all right, <laughs> don't want you to be running away out here, but she lets her guard down for one bit, dude, and Hikari just gets off, gets out of her grass, grass takes the banana muffin and just runs. <laughs> You know, in this picture, it kind of looks like Karuko is just ready to eat Futaba's hair. <laughs> oh my god, I just realized. That's Nana with her hair down! What the heck? <laughs> so, Maya came in to chip in on, like, the whole fact that Nana is deciding to, uh, be behind the, uh, the, the stage. She says, it's precisely because she knows what it's like to be on stage that she should be able to write for it. I look forward to a good production, one that uses all of us to the fullest. But, you know, in the end, uh, still only be one person staying at the top or something, I don't know. <laughs> so, Karuko and Futaba are looking over at at Maya, and then Nana answers, right? And the both of them end up looking back at her, and Nana says, I'll be sure we put on, we put on the ultimate performance, just like our last starlight. And so she offers her the banana. The banana muffins, right? And then, <laughs> and then Karuko is just like, like she she gives that face, and then she she looks over to where the banana is, and then she smiles. And I'm like, what the hell is going on? <laughs> yeah, you know, they did show us like, uh, they they did show Karuko and Futaba. They were the one who were watching Claudine and Maya, 
in like episode one when they're just like oh something's going on you know so they're just out here with like i don't i can't remember what they were eating popcorn or or ice cream or something you know just to like be like all right this is the show right here and this is our entertainment for today <laughs> so i was kind of thinking like i suppose karuko both karuko and futaba are like observant of other people which kind of goes to what claudine was saying to futaba later on where she's like oh i thought that you only had eyes on karuko Best of luck, Banana Han. I look forward to seeing your work. And then we just have Karuko, who's just... Sorry, not Karuko. Uh, Futaba. I'm, I'm starting to switch both of these two's name. <laughs> Futaba is just like... Hmm. <laughs> and so... Yeah, so that's why in hopes this time for sure you get the lead row. For sure you get the lead row. Here's a good luck candy. And so she's just out here offering candy. Right? Come on now, Karuko. Have some candy. <laughs> bribery and is bad, you know? And that's bribery, she says. As they're, they're just giving her candy in both pockets. <laughs> Very fun. Maya is just staring off into a distance. She sees something. So Claudine comes to school. Maybe that's who Maya was seeing. Who knows? Here's Mahiru who's just over here, you know, s simping as always. <laughs> but here she comes saying bonjour. I, of all people, unfortunately overslept. Really overslept. Or maybe she's just like, I just didn't want to get out of bed today. <laughs> so Claudine comes in all chipper and everything, right? And then, uh, God, this, these fucking glitches. That happens a lot for this one for some reason. Anyways, uh, Maya comes in, tells her good morning. The little doki doki kicks in around here at this point. And Claudine just says morning, but like without, with very low energy, right? And they kind of just ended like that. And so here's Futaba watching, you know, she, she, she's, she's been keeping an eye on her. <laughs> I'm so chuckling about the fact that Karuko's just out here fucking signing her name instead of writing notes. <laughs> ah, my stardom. <laughs> but we got Claudine practicing kind of like juna you know out here practicing uh her ass off until the point where she fainted you know maybe <laughs> claudine could have gone to that point but uh, futaba comes in just to be like watch the floor you'll get hurt if you don't wipe it properly claudine ko so does she say ko and then Fu uh, and then Karuko says Han. Then we're going back to the scene where Mahiru's looking around for Karen, but she ends up meeting Karuko instead. And Karuko is just like, oh, I've been quite bored here since Futaba left. And she's just like, oh, my caretaker's not here. <laughs> what am I supposed to do? She's out here taking care of herself, apparently. So, so Futaba asks Claudine, something happened between you two, right? You and Maya. She's the only reason why you'd be down like this. <laughs> I watch you guys. I know what's up. She's your rival, right? So as you would do any any theater kid, I guess, you know, if you're angry, instead of duking it out, you gotta you gotta dance it out. Aggressively take over and get her to dance with you. <laughs> I just wanted to teach her a lesson. Isn't that a bit cowardly, miss talented child actress? Now that I've grown up, I'm just a regular person understandable you know a uh, child prodigy once they grow up they're kind of just a regular person i'm the only one who's different that's why i that's what i came to think and yet she met and yet she lost to maya just out here getting destroyed out here i couldn't reach it so i assume reached like the stars okay so we just have a a, a little conversation between the uh, the two bl blue haired girl out here. So this is unbelievable, says Karuko. How could Futa uh, F Futaba leave me all alone for so long? Which again, what, a couple hours, an hour, 60 minutes? <laughs> God damn. <laughs> Mahiru Han, you've been abandoned as well, right? By Keren Han, that is. God, it's like so, like her, 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 her attitude is like so different in this up in this past scene. I'm just like, hmm. I guess this is just how she is when Futaba isn't here, and she's just like, oh, time to nap and not do anything. <laughs> Abandoned. I don't really think. Even though you say Karen Chan, I love you in your sleep every night, and this is Karuko teasing her, so you really do say it. <laughs> Fucking code read the shit out of her, dude. 
Stop messing around. I am just messing around. Of course. An unexpected friendship between two girls in a bath form when someone important is suddenly gone. It's strange, don't you think? Hikari Kaguda. Ever since she came here. Hmm. And then it seems that cuts, but if she says an unexpected friendship between two girls, if you just cross out in a bath, form when someone important is suddenly gone. So it's, it's that kind of like Karen and Mahiru's relationship when Hikari was gone. Yeah, ever since she came here, things have been different, right? How surprising. I thought you only had eyes for Karuko. If the top is like, well, yeah, <laughs> of course. <laughs> I do like her and I'm grateful to her. No, no, she's asking you only have eyes on her. <laughs> I have to look after her till she can take care of herself. That's what I thought at least, but I think I can do it. So instead of going for the secondary role. I figured I'd always be happy playing secondary roles, but I think I can be a top star. That's what Claudine says. And then they get the they get the phone call. To which, like, I would presume... Uh, hold on. I just want to hear this part. Yeah, I, I would presume Karuko got the... Got the got the ring uh, got the ringtone because like they're they're hearing it, but they also showed Mahiru Mahiru's face as well when they were when uh, when Karen and Maya were fighting with each other. So I was like, is she also a part of that? Because like when they showed uh, Nana right with her dual sword, they didn't show her face. So I'm just like, so like they hadn't called her yet. But before the audition, but before the audition, we had this uh, horror scene. <laughs> where Karen got fucking tied up and <laughs> we just have we just have Hikari with a fucking crowbar and she's not saying anything <laughs> like, what a what a why she get this crowbar first of all and like what was she doing with that was she threatening Karen with that <laughs> you know just fucking bopped her on the head with the crowbar <laughs> just to make sure you know <laughs> Where'd she get this? I would presume she probably got that from like the production team, right? <laughs> and also Karen broke out of that. So like, good on her, I guess. So Hikari's plan was to just let her not come to the audition by just locking her in this place, right? So she checks the uh, day three of the audition. She sees that she is, uh, she is off today, but Karen and Maya are going to be having their match. And here's Karen just running off. <laughs> Yo, she's fast. So she runs in. She's just like, I'm gonna go win. All right, bye. And then again, Hikari spends the rest of the episode just fucking running. And then we've got Maya staring at the, the 100th Seisho Festival. And then she looks at her picture. She looks at Claudine in particular. Because, <laughs> I mean, Claudine is looking at her <laughs> in the picture. <laughs> Maya is like... About to just give her a handshake, you know, congrats on a good show or something. But Claudine decided, nah, dog, I'm gonna do something very intimate. Like, damn, really brush her hair out of her. <laughs> Wait, hold on. <laughs> Let me look at that again. No, no, no. Her hair is already away from her ear, so. No, no, no. Really just gotta graze her hair with her thumb, like. <laughs> and her ear, too. Goddamn, like I said, what an intimate, what an intimate position. Just telling her. I'm not losing. Head of the 99th class, Maya Tendo. Damn, dude. Freaking Karen comes in. This is like her second audition day, like an actual full audition day. You know? Not like, so it's like her, she, she's been two and a half auditions. But like, she comes in and like the giraffe man is just out here, like, yeah, anyways, you're fighting the final boss. <laughs> just to really show you your skill level. Also, here's her. You, here's Hikari just using the fucking crowbar. <laughs> Good thing nobody else is here at the school right now. They, they just see you, they just see you with a crowbar. <laughs> My God, I should be able to see it as well. No, you won't see it. <laughs> you know the one thing about these song and dance is that it, it is in Japanese. So like. I have to look at the subtitles, but then like things are happening at the same time and then they'll be talking and then they're fighting and I'm just like, man, I don't, I don't know where my eyes should be, you know? Uh, the view at the top of that tower, so I should be able to see it. No, you won't see it. The view at the top of that tower. Okay. What is in your heart? That which 
the blinking eye takes in. What is in your heart that the blinking eye takes in? Even the star that has yet to arrive. If it is for the sake of that promise, we'll continue to streak forth. Do I have a lyrics? Can, can, do I, can somebody just get, can, can this show just give me like a fucking lyric script for this? <laughs> Thank you. Okay, so Karen, why are you in this review? What do you mean why? So I can be a star. Together with Hikari. Together, says Maya. Psh, you can't be a star together. If you catch a small star, you've obtained a small bit of happiness. If you catch a large star, you've obtained a large fortune. A small star, you gain a little bit of happiness. If you catch a large star, you have obtained a large fortune. And I guess that fortune can buy happiness. But in exchange, what are you willing to sacrifice somewhere around there? What have you given up? Yeah. The call of a goddess and the celestial s throne. Yes, there is only one star that drifts down. And so that's the star that we will catch. I will catch. My, my, my Atendo. <laughs> so Hikari's just like, you can't. Karen, you're gonna lose. I know you're gonna lose. That's why I was, <laughs> I was keeping you there in that room. You know, there she goes running. So this is the review of pride, right? Pride and arrogance, review of pride. Come climb up if you have the guts. No thanks, you come down here. <laughs> ah, it's part of the review. <laughs> Try to slay me, show me your rage. Don't be swayed by the great beast taking residence in your mind. Goddamn dude, she could have died with that swipe right at her neck. <laughs> I care nothing for those who lack resolve. I want to see that gaze, a fight with pride on the line. On stage, there is but one star. Seek for it, hunger for it, thirst for it, fight for it. See, look, so they showed Juna, and then they showed Mahiru, and then they showed Karuko, then they showed, uh, Banana. <laughs> is that just a banana? But they don't show her face. Here we have Karuko and Claudine just fighting out here. Hold on, before I, uh, yeah, so seek for a hunger, I thirst for it, fight for it. And so she ends up saying, I sacrificed that girl. I discarded her. Can't believe she dropped her crowbar. That is a challenge of the star, a noble intention. And that is precisely why I will, going higher and shining more, illuminating the horizon. One step forward, one step closer to the dream. That is pride, going higher and shining more towards an unreachable place. So that's why I will be top star, I assume, right? I can't even come close. I can't even come close. Who said that exactly? Hold on. Was that Hikari? Oh no, that's Karen. I can't even come close. I think that was Karen. Okay, because Karen's just like, oh my god! <laughs> She's all the way up there! I'm just down here! My god! <laughs> my pride has been crushed! I'm a star even on my own, says Maya. And so she defeats Karen. There is but one star that shines above all. Okay. And yet the flames of that girl's passion are still lit, I would presume. She's still going on. Meanwhile, Karen's passion, her flames, has been extinguished by this, by this sad, sad rain. Wow. So I noticed while editing that they were showcasing the gems that were embedded in the weapons of the stage girls. And, uh, you know, when they showcased Maya, it was glowing. When they showed Juna, it was glowing. When they showed Mahiru's, Karuko, and even Nana's, those were glowing. But when they were showing Karen's, it wasn't glowing. And so I was kind of wondering, does that have to do with the fact that Hikari wasn't there or maybe her heart really wasn't as in it or whatever, you know, she still hasn't really found her light yet. You know, the light that creates this shine in her gem. I thought that was an interesting thing since they were pointing that out by just having a frame showcasing Karen and her gem and how it's not glowing. You know, I personally have a problem with people who think that acting and, uh, yeah, a a a acting, show, play, and all that, like, they think that that's, like, a big competition. 
and whatnot, you know, I, but like, I totally get it in terms of liking the roles and, and all that. Like, that's like a big competition. And then, you know, if you live in a fucking capitalist country and all that, you can barely make any fucking money. Uh, you can, you can barely go and eat if you aren't able to get a top, top row that will pay you well and whatnot, you know, because companies are little fucking shits and they don't want you, they don't want to pay you all that well. And so you'd feel competitive in order to get top roles and be the, the shining star and all that. And also, there's that whole thing of fame, right? You want to get the lead role, so then, because that's the role that everybody is looking forward to. But I guess, <laughs> uh, you know, I, I kind of may, already may mention that, like, you know, when I did do stage plays and stuff, I much more prefer being in the back than out being out in the front. So, you know, I, I don't particularly have that whole need for, like, I want to be the number one person in, in in this whole stage play shit you know so I, I don't really understand that but I also don't like I, I think it's fine if you do that but like I don't really understand the whole reasoning of there can only be one at the top consider the fact that you can't unless you're doing a fucking monologue or something you, you can't ex like there are other people out there all right I, I'm saying all right the, all, it all boils down to this acting in a movie or being on stage play, you know, doing a musical and all that, that's- everything's a fucking team effort. So, like, I, I don't get it. <laughs> it's- it's literally all a team effort, alright? You can- one person cannot pull an entire show. I'm sorry, but if everybody's bad and then there's one good person, like, I mean, sure, maybe that person will still get, you know, more roles and everything, but, like, e e essentially the whole play would still be bad. You know, like, if everybody was mediocre and there was one good person, I still feel like it's overall a mediocre play. <laughs> you know? And like, if the lighting's bad, if the mixing is bad, if the audio's fucking bad, I don't know. Like, so look, I, 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 that's, I, I think that every, it, it's, it's a fucking team sport, okay? It's, it's a fucking team sport. There's some competition within it, but overall... Everybody, we're all in this together, all right? It's High School Musical out here. We're all in this together. <laughs> Anyways, I mentioned that I expected Karen to take the L. Um, I guess, I mean, I kind of expected it, it, it would to be soon because we gotta have other episodes either focusing on Karen getting herself back up, you know, picking herself back by the boots. I mean, look, Karen and Ikari, they're, at, they're, they're the last two at, the, at, the, at this leaderboard that I don't really understand, so... Good on them. They can both climb up together. <laughs> good on, good on them, dude. Good on them. I will make mention uh, the last episode where I had said uh, if you could guess who my favorite couple was going, it, it was going to be by like episode two. Um, I'd probably say now. You know, this is also the time where you could be wondering what would be my be my favorite couple. But you know, it might change because it certainly feels like I I'm I'm starting to feel like I'm forming one currently. But I feel like I need to see more. So, uh, you, you know, we, we've got like all the rest of these episodes. So it will be fun to see uh, the rest of the character cast and to see more of them being in the spotlight and everything and uh again hikari being the typical kudere out here you know she gonna be big mad at karen next episode or something i i don't know again i'm still kind of expecting a uh, uh um <laughs> i don't want to keep saying a match you know like <laughs> they're gonna fight no 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 they're gonna sing and dance this out they're gonna have a review uh, so i presume there is going to be one for hikari and mahiru uh, especially with Karuko just out here, just stirring the pot out here, you know, so we'll, we'll love to see. But as I said, good episode, and um, if I have anything else to say, I will write it in the description down below. And uh, that's it. Bye!